Well, I've done it again. I've bought another boat, so. Every time I sell one of these things, I say, yep, yeah, that's the last one. And then you can guarantee within about probably two weeks, three weeks, I'll be back on eBay searching for another one. And here we are. I've got another one. So what have I got? I bought a 2003 RK3 Stealth Bosa. She's a high miler. It's done 50,000 miles. It's in pretty good nick, to be honest. When I bought it, um, previous owner, well not the previous owner, the owner before him, it's got a few marks and stuff and that. He'd basically gone round and covered the marks up with like bits of black vinyl and stuff. Up on the top here, there was like a huge big bit of vinyl in there covering up, but there was actually nothing under there. There's something here, I think it's had like mirrors or something put there, but you don't see it. It's actually a pretty good looking bike and my full intention was, was to buy it and make it a turbo project over the winter to go back to Elvington with next year. Um, that might still happen, um, but I really like the bike and I'm almost contemplating, although it's a 50,000 mile high miler, kind of restoring it back to, not mint, but just getting the panels painted um, and then putting it back to, I can't say original because it is literally bloody original, apart from the cans, it's a totally stock bike totally stock every single bolt all the fasteners fittings all of that absolutely stock um, it's got a gen 2 front end in it which is really cool because uh, it junks the crappy six pots off the early boosters and replaces them with some nice takiko four pot radials which is cool it's got a set of kevlar lines on it so that's a nice big improvement still got the gen 1 wheels but gen 2 forks and it's got a nice radial master cylinder up on the top in there, which is cool. I think it's off a of Kawasaki. I'm not sure whether it's a ZX-10 one or what it's off of, but the guy just mentioned it was a Kawasaki unit. Uh, I might as well show you up on the top here while we're here. It's got heated grips. Check them bad boys out. I've actually used it a couple of times for work, and the heated grips are bloody godsend as we're now halfway through September. It's got one of those little gear shift indicator things. Um, a lot of this stuff's not the sort of stuff I'd actually buy and put on myself, but it's there, it's functional, it works, and it's quite handy. Because obviously back in the day these didn't have gear indicators. Um, still got its wicked old Bosa party piece. With the clocks doing their bit, which is cool. It's got the later clocks as you can see, that only go up to 180 mile an hour. The early ones obviously went to 200 mile an hour. Uh, what else has she got up here? Oh, 30 mil bar riser kit under here. The top yoke's basically spaced up because on the boosters, the bars are actually part of the top yoke. Um, so that's all been lifted up 30 mil. Makes it quite comfy, actually. I wouldn't say you really notice it, but it's a comfy bike to ride, so it's doing something. Body work is all in pretty good nick, to be honest. There's a dent in the top of the tank just there. That he had some massive big bit of black vinyl over to try and smooth out the dent but i'd rather have a dent than a massive big bit of black vinyl it's got a few marks here and there uh the plan is possibly over the winter um to pull a couple of the panels off and drop them over to jago and get him to basically just put them all back in the gloss black the bike's so original i think it actually warrants spending a little bit of money on it um and putting all the panels back in good condition really all the pipe work and everything's all in good condition. It's got a Gen 2 rear shock tucked away in there. They're absolutely, I think they're pretty much the same as a Gen 1 shock to be honest. Might have been revalved slightly. But it's little bits like, this is where you see the mileage, is the condition of this and the caliper and stuff. But I'm going to pull all that out, get that cleaned back up, uh, see how the caliper cleans up. If it doesn't clean up, I'll paint it back up in the gold because it should be obviously keep it gold, keep it original. It's got a set of Remus Evolution cans, or Revolution cans I should say, a set of Michelin 2CT tyres, but all the back end and stuff is still original. Um, I think when you're buying older bikes now, especially myself, that's what I'm interested in, especially with the older stuff. I'm not interested in tail tidies and all that old caper. It's originality now. Original indicators back in front, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's about it as far as telling you what it's got. As I say, as you can see, it is a pretty clean bike. It 
it is a pretty clean bike. I have obviously given it a bit of a spoop since I've had it, but only the bodywork. I haven't touched on the mechanical side of it, like the actual swinging arm and the shock and all the rest of it and stuff. We'll save that for another day. I don't think I'm going to bore people with doing, oh, I'm going to clean my chain, or oh, I'm going to clean my swinging arm videos. But I'll do a couple of photos and stuff and stick them in now and again, like so when all these bits are, have been cleaned up and they're all in good condition again. And we'll go through it that way. So, yeah, there she is. Hope you like it. So, on to what's the plans for it. The plans for it obviously were to buy it, pull it apart, turbocharge it, because I've still got the turbo kit off the beaking, um, which will fit straight on this. The plenum one, because it's a Gen 2 one, but I can either have the plenum modified or buy another plenum. I was going to get a charge caller, to be honest, and tuck it away under the tank. So that's an option. But I think until I do that, I think what I'm going to do in between well, now and then sort of thing is not do so much like little challenges and stuff on it but just see what's left in the bike um, can you buy a high mileage bike and it still be good should you buy a high mileage bike is it a good idea what's the pros the cons um, all bikes at the minute I've got like this what I'm calling COVID tax attached to them uh, everything at the minute is crazy money so is buying a high mileage bike or a car even a good option to get you into the market personally I say yes um, if the service history is good uh, or you can just basically use your head and you can see that things been looked after it's just done high miles I don't see a problem I had a G6R1000 Phantom I think it was earlier this year uh, at 44,000 miles and it was one of the hardest bikes I've ever tried to sell because literally no one would touch it purely because it had done 44,000 miles there was nothing wrong with the bike at all so, like I say, this one's done 50,000 miles. I want to do a few little bits with it. I want to see, can it still pull nearly 200 mile an hour? Anybody that knows, these never actually did 200 mile an hour. They were pretty close to it, and out of all the big hyper milers and hyper bikes, it did come the closest. Um, so it'd be good to see what's left in it top end. Um, will it still run a 10 second quarter? I remember back in the day, these were these would piss a 10 second quarter. So it'd be good just to whip it up to Santa Pod while there's still a few rungs with your rungs left before the end of the year. Run it down the quarter and see what's still got left in it. Um, can we chuck it on a train? Take it over to Germany? Do a lap of the Nürburgring? Um, I'd like to do something like that and maybe do like a little challenge whereby we do it in a day. Stick it on the first train over, see if the tourist fountain's open, get it around the track during the day and get it back in the same day. Just to prove that you know they can still do it. You don't have to run away from high mileage bikes. Um, apart from that, maybe a couple of little quick trips over here, Edinburgh and back in a day. I just want to prove that these things were built to last. And that yes, it's got high miles, but that doesn't mean you have to pamper them and not use them. You can still stack up the miles and use them for what they were built for. It's comfy. I've used it a couple of times for work. You can commute on it as far as I'm concerned. It's got everything you need to commute on it. But I think I'll hold off on the ripping it apart and turbo and it just for a minute and we'll put together maybe like a few little challenges. I've stuck a thing on Instagram and basically said to a few people, chuck me some ideas of what you want to see me do with it. It's a really nice bike, I think. Yeah, she's a bit long in the tooth now and she hasn't got all the corner and ABS and launch control and all that old bollocks, but I've got plenty of bikes that do. so. It's a bit of a breath of fresh air actually to have one that you actually ride yourself. So I'll leave it to you. I've got a few ideas what I want to do with it. A few crazy little challenges and stuff. And let's just basically see what's left in a, what is it now? 18 years old? Pretty much 18, 19 years old? 50,000 mile high miler. Can she still deliver? From what I've seen of it and what I've ridden already, yes it can as far as I'm concerned. Um, will we have any reliability problems? Will we have some niggles with it? We'll see. I think the only way to find out is to push it back to what it used to be and see what she does. So keep an eye out. I'm going to try and do a few videos over the next few weeks on it and start doing some of these little ideas and challenges that I want to do. And we'll see how she goes. But it's still one of the most legendary cockpits ever if you've ever ridden one. Oh, and just while we're on that, I've used it a couple of times, gone along in the sun and you get your shadow, but like I am now, and that outline is just absolutely iconic when you're riding along. 
and you look down and you see your own shadow on the thing, the shape of these is just literally iconic. That kind of marked the shape for all these big monster hyperbikes. So, I hope you're interested. Cheers for watching. And like I say, if you've got any ideas or some bits and bobs you want to see me do with it, even if it's just maintenance stuff, I'm going to pull the panels and stuff off. I haven't touched it yet. I've lifted the tank just to see what's under there, um, but haven't touched it. It's all completely stock. Um, it's been recently serviced by the look of it. The oil's as gold as can be. Filters are all new by the look of it. So I'm not going to delve into that. But I am going to obviously pop a few panels off and just see what's lurking behind the panels of a 50,000 mile bike. So if you're interested, keep an eye out on this one. I'm going to try and get this done in the next few weeks. As like I say, get a few little challenges done. I want to. I do want to try and get over to Germany next month. I'm just literally waiting for my passport to be renewed now. So I know it's a little bit late in the year, but we're having a pretty good bit of late sun at the minute. So hopefully we can stick it on the train and whiz it over there for a day and see how she goes. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll leave it to you. Chuck me some ideas. I look forward to seeing what you all got to say about it. Bye-bye for now.